my name is Deborah Cavanaugh Grant, and I'm a local food system small farm educator located out of Springfield. And I'd like to welcome everyone to today's webinar. I don't know about you, but I have a severe case of spring fever, and it makes me look forward to the upcoming farmer's market season. Um, I'm involved in farmer's markets, as many of you probably are as consumers. Uh, it's an important part of uh, my shopping uh, experience every week, and I'm sure many of you are also uh, very uh, interested in going to farmer's markets. The other thing that I do uh, is work with farmers markets professionally so I have an opportunity to work with people who are vending at farmers markets. Um, I'm also on the board of the Illinois Farmers Market Association and uh, some of my colleagues are on the call with me today. We started a project last year, the Farmers Market Price Reporting Study. Ron Wynn Alley and I are the chairs and then Mike's on the call who participated and we had extension uh, educators program coordinators and um, other volunteers that would help, Master Gardener volunteers. So this was a really interesting project and one of the things that it led me to do is that from May through October every week I went to the farmers markets and spent a lot of time looking at farmers market displays. So when we looked as educators in developing this year's series, one of the things I thought about was looking, you know, going to the market every week I noticed opportunities for farmers to do a better job to be more effective in their sales at the market. So today, uh, this is uh, not an opportunity. We don't can't see each other face-to-face, uh, -face, but there is an opportunity to put in questions. So if you have any, and we can try to have a conversation that way. Um, so, And I hope you think that's a cute picture on the front. I think that's, I can't tell if, if that's a happy shopper or an unhappy shopper. So today we're going to cover three things. We're going to talk briefly about the local food landscape, issues related to local food and, and why this is an important topic. Secondly, we're going to talk about the importance of farmers markets and obviously if you're on the call today you feel that farmers markets are important. And then the topic for discussion is really how do you create displays that can help you be effective in your sales at the farmers market. Today's consumers are more interested than ever and what they eat and where their food comes from. And that is reflected in our menu trends research. And this is a quote from the National Restaurant Association. And look, this report just came out every year. The National Restaurant Association puts out the top five uh, food trends, and they have many more than five. I just am, we're talking about the top five today. But as you can see from this, the top five include locally sourced meats and seafood, locally grown produce, environmental sustainability, healthful kids' meals, and natural ingredients that are minim and minimally processed food. So this is a, an important thing for you as a person who is vending at a market or is working with people who are doing that to understand that this is an important you know, aspect of our food, food landscape. So when you think about um, you know, why do people purchase local food? There's a really interesting study, if you're interested in looking at it further, from the Food Marketing Institute. And they do this US, <clears throat> excuse me, U.S. grocer shopping trends. And in their study in 2014, you can see they interviewed over 2,000 uh, consumers. The vast majority of these people say that they purchase locally grown products at least occasionally. So that's, you know, a couple times a month at least. So 90% of consumers say that they're purchasing locally. And that one of the things that was interesting in the study that they said one of the reasons that people wanted to purchase this food is that they believed and had an inherent trust in the quality of those products and the people that they were buying them from. So thinking about yourself as a farmer who's vending at the farmer's market, you can see obviously when they're doing these shopper trends that people want to buy local food, they seek it out. And the other thing that you have that uh, more so even from a grocery store that maybe is selling local foods is that you have the opportunity to engage with people and develop those relationships of trust that a grocery store wouldn't be able to do. My friend and colleague Tara Brockman, many of you may know her, um, she's an educator, the founder of an organization called The Land Connection and as you can see here the author of this really amazing book called The Seasons on Henry's Farm. And um, in my work with her, we uh, held these uh, 
Central Illinois Farm Beginnings Training Programs, and we'd have these conversations about local foods. And Tara came up with this way of talking about this issue of using these three things, face, taste, and place. And so thinking about why consumers want local foods, there's three components. So taste, people want fresh, delicious, and nutritious food. People want to have a direct relationship with the farmer. And also they're interested in connecting with the family, the farm, and the community. So this sense of place is important to people. So I don't know about you, but those look like a really nice group of tomatoes. This is uh, Tara's sister, Teresa Brockman, from Sunny Lane Farms. She has and Teresa's Fruits and Herbs. And consumers want to buy from people that they know and they trust, and they want a food with a face on it. This third photograph is of Sally's Fields. Sally's a graduate of uh, the University of Illinois Beginning Farmer Program and also Central Illinois Farm Beginnings. And she has a CSA in Springfield, and that's her family, and uh, a photograph of them. And then they want to, people want to know who's growing their food. So let's shift now to talking a little bit about farmers markets. And we'll talk more about this organization at the bottom, the Farmers Market Coalition, but you know everything needs to have a definition. And according to the coalition, a farmers market is a public and recurring assembly of farmers or their representatives selling directly to consumers food which they have produced themselves. More specifically, a farmer's market operates multiple times per year and is organized for the purpose of facilitating personal connections that create mutual benefits for local farmers, shoppers, and communities. Farmer's markets are an integral part of the urban farm linkage, and they have continued to rise in popularity. And this is mostly due to the consumer's growing interest in obtaining fresh products, as we said, directly from the farm. Farmers markets allow consumers to have access to locally grown, farm fresh produce. It also enables farmers the opportunity to develop a personal relationship with their customers. And then they can also cultivate consumer loyalty with their customers and conversely with the, far with the farmers. Direct marketing of farm products through farmers markets continues to be an important sales outlet for many uh, farmers uh, in Illinois and, and nationwide. So let's look at some statistics and some data about farmers market. I went on to this website, the USDA Ag Marketing Service website. Anyone, you know, you can go there and check it out and find and they have a really nice searchable database per state and then it's as you can see on here if you're interested in seeing which markets uh, are involved in SNAP or WIC or Senior Farmers Market Nutrition Program, you can also look at that. But as of uh, yesterday when I went to got the most recent data, there were 8,384 farmers markets operating throughout the United States. And what's interesting for us here in Illinois that we rank fourth in the nation of the numbers of farmers markets. So there's 324 currently registered. And how this works is that a farmer's market would need to complete this paperwork through our Illinois Department of Agriculture. So if you're a farmer market manager and you're interested in having your market be listed in this directory, you need to do that. And then what happens is, is that comprehensive list, they pick a date one day of the year where that information then needs to be submitted to the Ag Marketing Service. So that's the data set that populates um, this website link that you see here. So you're, you might be wondering, well, there's my market's not listed on there. Well, that's because the market manager hadn't turned that information in. So again, if you have a market and you'd like it to be listed, make sure that you do that. I'm sure many of you have probably can figure out like what's the top farmer's market state. Uh, it's California. Uh, second is New York. Third is Michigan. Fourth is Illinois. And fifth is Ohio. So those are the top five, at least in 2015. Um, oops, I said March 2014, it's 2015. So th that just to give you some idea of the interest in our state in terms of farmers markets. Here's a chart that may be of interest too. It's from the USDA, again, Ag Agricultural Marketing Service. And you can see from 1994 to 2014, the number of farmers markets in the, in the United States in this increase. So you can see there's, there was a really huge jump 
you know, between 2009 and 2014. We've had a little bit of leveling off from 2014, but again, there's, this, there's a lot of consumer interest in farmers' markets. So what are some of the top reasons that consumers shop, shop at farmers' market? The number one reason that people said that they wanted to shop at farmers' market was freshness. As you can see here, I mean, those are pretty amazing vegetables, and I think that for many of us, that's you know one of the reasons we want to shop there. We know that many of the things that we're purchasing in that market were just harvested that morning. Another reason that farmers or consumers want to shop at farmers' markets is taste. And um, it's, I mean, the, the taste of the food and then the shopping experience. And one of the things that's interesting that's going to be happening in Illinois, we're working, we have a legislation that was passed and we're going to be developing the uh, framework for doing so, but is offering a certificate program for people to do sampling at farmers markets. So farmers would go and uh, have an educational program then have a certificate, they would have to pay a fee, and then that would allow them to have uh, tasting at uh, any farmer's market in the state, so there would be reciprocity between counties. So this is something uh, studies have shown that when people have an opportunity to taste something, they're obviously more inclined to buy it. So this is going to be an important thing for our farmers at farmer's markets to have this. You can um, have tastings at farmer's markets currently, but you work with your Illinois Department of Public Health county by county and then do the appropriate paperwork and pay the fee based on um, how those counties do that. And the other thing is that the third re top reason why people want to shop at the farmers markets is obviously access to local food and was shared in the beginning of this presentation from the restaurant association for chefs. This is a primary thing of interest to people. We see that there's obviously interest in farmers markets. So this local food is a, is a primary interest for people. And now we're going to shift to uh, the main topic that we're talking about today is effective farmers market displays. And this is a critical component for effective and profitable selling at the farmers market. So what can a farmer do? What are some of the things that you can do to increase your effectiveness at the farmers market? Well, you know, common sense is you need to know who are your market customers. And there, we were in face to face with one another. We could have a conversation about, you know, how do you how do you figure that out? So you can do surveys and things like that, and just talking to your customers and seeing who they are and and why why they're coming to your stand. The other thing that you can look at is what are other vendors doing or planning to do. And so if you're a farmers market manager, you have vendor meetings. There's opportunities through, and we'll talk about this a little bit later, is the Illinois Farmers Market Association and educational programming where vendors and farm market managers can get together and, and learn from one another. And then, obviously, it's important to get customers, you know, figure out ways that you can get customers to, to your market and obviously, you know, then to, to your stand. And lastly, for the topic today is, figuring out ways that you can create displays that really can help you sell your product. So you have this great product and you have a farmer's market is bustling with lots of shoppers. And so you might be asking yourself why your sales aren't as good as you had hoped. So having a great product is really important, but only if you can attract customers to your stand to try and to buy. So today we're going to talk about some basic tips for arranging your space, display strategies that work, and a few other marketing tactics that will signal consumers that you are open for business. And I'd just like to say too that this isn't um, rocket science here. This is some pretty straightforward thinking about uh, how you can approach this. And many of you are probably doing that. So maybe in our discussion or if something comes to mind, when I'm sharing this information that you can share that and we can have a discussion after my presentation ends. Uh, there's a professor from Virginia State University Cooperative Extension, uh, Teresa Nartia, and she shared that one of the most important things a farmer can do to improve marketing is self-analyze. Farmers are usually busy in production mode or packing and putting everything into the truck. She suggests that farmers can lay out photos of the market setup from previous years and analyze them from every angle to determine where improvements can be made. 
And she said you can also ask people or the market manager if this is somewhere they would shop. She said if you didn't have a, a, a previous stand, you know, you could take photos of, you know, if you hadn't done this before, take photos and then set it up, the stand how you want it to look, and then review those photos. And so from my perspective and also from other people who think about this question, your goal is to capture your, your customer's attention at the very first market, right? Because those are the customers, you're, you're wanting customer loyalty and you want people to come back. So one of the things to do is to make sure that you have an effective display that's engaging and that will invite people in. So some issues to consider, it's, uh, you know, as we said, a good display is a great strategy for increasing your sales. And once you get shoppers there, Getting shoppers to buy is a lot easier once you have them standing there, right? At your stand, you have to get them in. They're walking down the path, and you need to get them to stop. Um, one of the things, too, that's interesting, if you've ever, you know, looked around at a farmer's market and you see different um, vendors that seem to have a lot of customers, and that seems to attract other people who want to come there. They're like, wow, what's going on there? And, I, you know, I'm going to check this out, too. And lastly, I think this is the point of this presentation today. It's just, um, as I said, not magic or rocket science. It just you need to spend a little time and some creativity and figure out ways to have your stand stand out. So the things we're going to talk about today, there's eight of them. So uh, these include creating a sense of abundance. How do you make your space customer friendly? Considering maybe uh, setting up your display with a three-dimensional component. Labeling is, is really important. And I can just say from my experience of writing down prices and looking at um, numerous uh, farmer's market stands last year, I mean, I, that was one of the things that it, I would stand at some of these and I couldn't, couldn't discern what they were selling at what price. It, so I think that this is something to make sure that you do correctly. You need to be visible because you're competing with a lot of the same people that are, I mean, people that are selling similar products. And so how do you do that? How do you make yourself stand out? How do you present your products in, in a way that makes them shine so that they do stand out? Uh, packaging to fit. And then maybe something to do with um, a, a grab and go section. This is a suggestion where how you can put your produce together in a way that makes it more effective for people that maybe are considering um, needing to have, they don't have a lot of time to cook and, and maybe doing that. So we'll talk about that briefly. So creating a sense of abundance and more abundance. And I think one of the things to me about going to the farmer's market is, I mean, just these, the just beautiful produce and it's, it's, it's amazing, all the colors and everything like this. And as you know, um, we as eaters and as shoppers, we, you know, we do it with our eyes. And so one of the things is to consider um, is, you know, how do you set up your stand so that it encourages this sense of abundance. So overflowing baskets of produce invite the customer in and make them want to purchase. So uh, the challenge here is, you know, you want people to come in, and, but you also want, want people to shop. And uh, the, this other thing, and you've probably noticed this yourself too, is that how people set up their display in terms of this looking at the question of abundance is, let's say you have a whole basket of uh, tomatoes and then you get down to just a couple. You can have those tomatoes sit there for the rest of the farmer's market, right? Because people are disinclined to buy, you know, if one is just sitting there by itself, you know, people just, they don't get up. So one of the things is you need to set up your stand in a way where you can keep this sense of abundance going. So you perhaps to consider starting with larger containers, reducing the size. Let's say you have more tables to start with. You, you consolidate so that by the end of the market, if somebody's getting there at 11 o'clock, you still want that shopper to feel similar, which is often hard to do, as someone who would come at 8 o'clock, right? So as it says here lastly, you know, you don't want to give these late shoppers that, you know, they're late and everything's been sold and they just are getting the leftovers. Another thing to consider is to make your space customer friendly. So thinking about when you shop at the farmer's market, you need to have a space that is 
um, not cluttered and overcrowded. And this is one of the things I would have to say that a lot of the vendors that I, you know, paying attention to this, that was something that it was really cluttered and overcrowded, and it made it uh, difficult to shop. Um, I, you know, and I don't know, I guess people have different of opinions about this, but I just feel like um, you still want that abundance, but at the same time, you don't want it to seem cluttered. The other thing that, obviously, if you can protect um, your space from the weather, most vendors have tents um, or other things, which is, is important. Um, this idea of moving around. So some farmers markets, it just depends on where you are and the kind of space that's available. Often it's a table where you as the vendor stand behind the table, so the customers are just moving in front of you. Uh, in looking at some preparing for this presentation, they, it was suggested that one of the best formats for designing your farmer's market stand would be in a U-shaped, where people could uh, come, come in that way. So um, that's important to consider. And then one of the things that you're going to obviously need to do is that through the duration of the market, your, you or, and or your employees are going to have to restock this. And then you'll have... Uh, places where you know you're going to want to talk and engage with your customers. So how do you set up your stand where people can comfortably shop, but at the same time you can have those side conversations with the customer or, you know, stocking your display. So try to keep that in mind. And the other thing too, it's just important from both your customer's perspective and from your perspective is when you're setting up your produce and products on the table, you want the customer to be able to access them yourself because you're going to be very busy doing lots of other things and um, so that they can do that themselves. And then sometimes, too, I've, I watched at the market, if people get too frustrated, you know, if they're standing there and they don't know what something is and they're trying to ask or they don't know what the price is, you know, they just walk away. So just make sure that you set this up in a way that it's uh, customer friendly. This is an interesting um, thing to think about is how you design your farmer's market display in terms of the, the levels that you're, you're doing. So one of the things in looking at this is that it's suggested that you look at all three dimensions of your stand. So height, width, and the depth. And so in setting up your stand, you're going to combine these three aspects to make the most, because you have, you know, usually you have a pretty small space, right? So thinking about the average customer, they have about a two to three foot reach into a display without, you know, feeling awkward or, or inconvenience. So thinking about that, and then you think, okay, well, how can I set these things up? So setting up perhaps a display rack. They don't have to be expensive. I started uh, going on Pinterest and looking around, and there's some really wonderful ideas. If you're, if you use Pinterest, just Google Farmers Market Displays, and they have all kinds of great ideas and DIY kind of things to do. Um, one of the benefits of this is that it allows your um, area to look full, and then it can show uh, different sizes of products to, to, you know, give them an option, an idea of what your options are. So if you're growing different sizes, let's say, of peppers or anything like that. One of the things, just to caution you too, um, while these racks and these displays are, are very useful, one of the things you need to make sure is that you anchor them well because obviously farmers markets for the most part are outside and at least in, in central Illinois we get some pretty strong winds. So make sure if you, the displays that you have set up um, that can handle uh, stronger winds or inclement weather. This thing of labeling, I, as I said uh, briefly before, this was a big deal because you know my job was to stand there and to walk through the market and write down the prices. And there were uh, several vendors where it, it was difficult to figure out, you know, number one, what the products were, they weren't labeled, and then the prices. And so I would suggest that this is a really important part of your, of having an effective farmer's market display. So making sure that everything is clearly marked. Many of you um, maybe do this already but offer opportunities for recipes or even signage that tells people about attributes of the product and how one can, can use it. We talked briefly about this idea of sampling, so I think it's very, uh, we're very fortunate in Illinois we're going to be able to move forward with an easier way for you as a farmer market vendor is to offer opportunities for people to sample. 
This is an interesting component uh, too where it says many people are reluctant to ask the cost and so they will walk away and as I said I, I was trying to write the prices down so I had to often engage with that vendor because I didn't know what the prices were but I watched people look around for that information and if they didn't see it they would they would walk away. You also should consider that your signs need to be read easily and the suggested would be a, of a distance of three to five feet. Uh, if you are selling something that maybe people are not familiar with it becomes really important that you have signage about what that is and maybe possible uh, uses. So from my perspective too selling at a farmers market has a pretty strong educational component. So you have people there, as we've mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, who are interested in local food. They're interested in supporting the farmers markets. And many of them come there and engage with you as the farmer to learn more about how the food is raised, um, when they purchase the food, how they can use this you know, in their kitchen. So I think if you have ways that you can do that in terms of effective signage, that, that's an important part of your uh, display. Making yourself visible. Uh, some people um, go to greater lengths, and you can see from the slide that I just showed you, you know, just looking at this, okay, walking up to this stand, you can see that they have uh, a motif going on. They have a red tent, although in my reading of this for preparing the presentation, it was suggested that dark colored tents aren't as effective than they suggested white is the best because of how it reflects on the vegetables here. But you know, their theme is red. So they have red shirts, a red and white tablecloth. So it has when you come up to this stand, you're pretty clear like who's who's the person that's the farmer or the salesperson and you get this sort of a connected uh, vibe here of this uh, display. So um, <clears throat> it's suggested that if you are uh, able and interested in doing this, it might be something to consider wearing an apron with your farm logo or a t-shirt or something like that that identifies you. Uh, I have to say too that going to the farmers market and watching every week, I was really surprised sometimes about how uh, grumpy, <laughs> I guess for a better word, some, and maybe there's you know obviously reasons that can occur with dealing with the public for a couple hours uh, that you could get grumpy, but you should try to be opening, open and welcoming because I think that's obviously when people are coming to this, they're coming for this experiential component too. So uh, try to do that. And um, this idea too of like hiding behind your display that, you know, maybe you shouldn't, should try to be out there and, and, and know that you're a part of it. And again, thinking about how you're displaying your products, uh, I don't know. I mean, we could have a conversation about the different aesthetic, you know, aesthetics, what people think is attractive. But, you know, here's obviously this farm has a lot of different varieties of apples. They have these unique containers. This is, a, you know, with these metal containers there, you can see here they have the different sizes. So, you know, in terms of how they're, the dimensions, of how they're displayed. So I don't, you know, I guess we, you could think yourself, you know, is this something that you would see as an engaging display that would make you want to walk over there and purchase these apples instead of if they were just inside of a box. So one of the things that you can do, and this is where your creativity and your own personality would come into it, you know, how do you do this? So if you think about your signage or if you have a farm logo, so do you have some kind of a, a theme going on there? Do you have unique boxes or crates or something like that? And it's up, you know, I've seen all kinds of uh, stands and some really amazing um, designs that people have, ha have at their farmer's market stand. Then thinking about, like, we showed the picture of Triple S Farms where they had their awning, their tent, their tablecloths. It all was um, used to enhance what, that they were, what they were selling. And then, um, I, I think this was an interesting comment about avoid using colors that clash with your um, products or send mixed messages uh, to to the buyer. And so I think, um, you know, that's something to consider too in terms of how you set that up. 
this is an interesting thing for um, especially consumers and people that are busy. And, and one of the things we've talked about it, uh, Bronwyn and I, um, in terms of this report that we're working on for this farmer's market study about when people come to the market and how are they spending their money and, and what they're looking to buy. And there's a lot of conversation amongst farm market managers and even growers where, you know, you sell your uh, produce, right? And then there seems to be a, a big interest in people to have that to have ready, uh, already prepared items. So if you look around at the market, you know, are people buying the baked goods or things like that? So one of the things that you can do as a produce grower is to develop, as this you can see from this package, where they were growing all of these items, and they made just a sort of you know cute little sign. It's nothing fancy, right? They have a little. Uh, piece of paper with the recipe and they just sort of put everything together and they say okay you know you don't even as a consumer they don't have to think about okay what goes into salsa you could just buy that it's seven dollars and fifty cents and it makes one quart and so there you go you can just walk up to the stand and leave with you know a way to make salsa so that's the thing I think is important to to consider when you're designing your farm market stand and then it gets back to knowing who your customers are you know, is this something that would be of interest to them? So depending on where your market is, you know, would your market bear spending $7.50 for a little basket of vegetables? Or do you have customers who can figure out how to buy some tomatoes and, you know, peppers and things like that and make their own salsa? So um, this is the other thing, too, where you can see this wide range of approach, too, where some farm market stands, you know, obviously things come in bags or they're bunched and things like that, or you can offer people the opportunity to uh, fill their own baskets. So I think that's something to consider, and often it's dependent on what you're selling to, right? So you're going to need to accommodate all the types of customers that, that you have to. So again, I think, you know, maybe look at if you have, a, you know, try it this year to see, let's say, this stir fry they're suggested here a stir-fry medley, a soup veggie pack, or salsa. And uh, I, I think also when you're doing that, this value-added component, you can end up you know, making more money than you would if you sold those uh, vegetables individually. And this is another thing where uh, with people being busy or whatever, you know, maybe you could have this kind of grab-and-grow section where you know, people can just stop in. It's easy for them and they don't have to stand around and figure out what they're going to buy or whatever like that. You can, can do that and they can pop in and pop out. So that's something to consider too, uh, maybe trying it out and seeing if that helps your sales. So thinking about those components, I just want to talk briefly about, you know, what are some like step-by-steps for, for planning your display? So how do you do this? So the first thing to consider is, you need to make a sketch. So thinking about what market you go to, you know, what's your display area? And saying, okay, I have three tables and th they're going to go here and here's my tent. And just sort of laying it out, what, what your stand is going to look like physically on a piece of paper. And then it's important to figure out, to make a list of the items that you're going to be selling, right? So when we talked about this, the dim dimensions and how you're setting up everything, you know, what are you selling? You have different ask things that you're going to sell, let's say, in May and June and what you're going to sell in September. And then you have to figure out what are you going to need in terms of the containers or how are you going to be displaying your produce? So are you, if you're going to be using baskets or boxes or whatever you're going to be using, you need to figure that out. So you can see here from this picture, this is a pretty simplistic way you know, it's attractive where they just took these rather inexpensive bushel baskets, turned them on their sides. It, it has this component of abundance, right? It's aesthetically pleasing in terms of the colors. Um, they have signage on each one that says exactly what it is and the price. So here's a pretty easy idea for how you can, um, you know, lay this out. So in, it would be important to figure out ahead of time, you know, what are you going to do? And then 
um, you know, what kind of display materials are you going to be using? So again, when I was checking out Pinterest and looking at farmer's market displays, I mean, this is a uh, company that sells these baskets, but, you know, in a DIY thing, you know, it's not a lot of work to maybe make something like this. So, you know, how many tables do you have? Uh, what type of banner signs and covering? You know, figuring out what, what do you have and making a list of all of those things. And again, as I say, this isn't rocket science. It's just taking you through sort of this um, thought process. So this is another thing, too, in terms of equipment uh, that you'll need to have. And so are you going to have, obviously, you're going to need a cash box. Many growers have scales, so you're going to need to have a scale. Um, what uh, Are you providing plastic bags for people, paper bags? Are you going to need need that? And then just you're going to need to have a small box for just things that, you, you know, if you have emergency repairs or tapes or scissors or anything like that that you're going to need to bring to the market. And one of the things that's important, too, is that when you're looking at all the equipment that you have, you know, make sure that it's clean uh, if the tables need to be repainted, you know, washing and cleaning so that, again, if you're going to look at having an effective display, those things need to be considered so that, it's, uh, you know, before you get to the market and unpack the box. So make sure that things are clean and in good repair. And then... Uh, one of the things to do is maybe to set up this mock display. So, you know, at home before you leave, you know, put everything out there and, and see how this looks. And maybe ask, you know, take some photographs and ask people about it. And the question that you should always, you know, be asking yourself is, you know, would I be inclined to, uh, you know, stop by that stand or is this something that's appealing to me? So because of my working with the farmer's market pricing study, I think my whole way of looking at farm market stance has changed because, you know, I would go to the market before and, and had some, you know, I guess in the back of my mind I would think about these things, but now I go and I, I with a critical eye and I look and see, okay, maybe that person should do this or they should do that. So uh, I would suggest, as it says here, is that opening day is the best, not the best time to figure it out. So set it up ahead of time before you go to the market. And this is something, too, that I think is really uh, of interest to a lot of consumers. We talked about the interest in local food. So make some um, recipes or have something that you can um, give to people. I think that's um, – and you're also, you know, you're marketing your business, right? So if you have – use social media, you have a Facebook page, you, uh, you have a website, you have all of those things – you know, make sure you have a way for people to engage. You're looking at developing your customer base. You know, how do you get people's contact information? Do you have a sign-up sheet there where you ask people for their email address? So things like that where you can then uh, engage your customers and then throughout the week. And so many farmers markets will do a, send out a Facebook posting, you know, hey, here's what we have this week at the market. Make sure you come and see us. Twitter, for those people who are using that, that's become really um, common thing for people, or not common, but something that many growers are using where they can engage with people that morning of the farmer's market while, you know, people are getting up thinking, oh, what am I going to do on Saturday? You know, they send them that and then they can come down to the market. Here's these information sheets. Um, to me, I think uh, some of the farmers that I uh, that go to that are, I'm a customer of, you know, they do this and it's really nice where especially if it's a product that people aren't familiar with, I think it works for a lot of uh, consumers it, and obviously it's going to, you know, the whole goal of all of this conversation is to increase sales. So if people don't know, you know, what that is, obviously they're not going to buy it. So if you can offer them like this is sort of an attractive sign. It makes you look at it, and then it, you can't see the very bottom of it, but it talks about what it is and then how you can use it in cooking. So I don't know how many of you on the call are uh, have a farmer's market or vending at the farmer's market or if you have any employees, but one of the things, and I'm sure you would realize this, is that, you know, if you're there vending, you know, you're the, it's your farm, you're there and really engaged with what happens there. If you have employees that are there representing you, you need to really make sure that they understand, you know, what your farm is all about because consumers, 
as we've talked about, are interested in local food. They have concerns and questions about it. So if someone asks, well, where was this grown? How was this grown? You know, your employee should be able to answer this question. And again, you know, it makes sense. You know, people need to have a pleasant experience there. They're going to come back if they feel welcomed and, uh, you know, that you're, you and your staff are really customer oriented. So um, this, briefly, we've talked about the local food landscape uh, and why uh, this is an important issue, the importance of farmer's market and how that interfaces with this local food landscape, and then very briefly, how to create displays that really sell. And obviously, your goal is to set these up in a way that you can improve, improve increase your profitability. So um, the, the, at the end of the day, the um, thing that you're wanting to get to is that the longer you can keep someone at a display, the more inclined they're going to be to spend money, right? So the longer that they're standing there. And so that's why, in my opinion, it's so important to spend some real critical time designing your display. I'd like to spend a few more minutes talking about some resources. So as I mentioned before, uh, there's an organization in our state called the Illinois Farmers Market Association. And as you can see here, the goal of the association is to provide education and support to farm market organizers, farmers, vendors, and other community food and nutrition organizations. And another thing that the association does is it provides partnerships, resource sharing, and training on best management practices, operating procedures, and state regulations through workshops, webinars, and various social marketing venues. The uh, Illinois Farmers Market Association, uh, Mike is on the call, uh, myself, uh, Lori George of Extension colleagues participated with other folks to develop the Farmers Market Association training manual. You can go to this URL here and, and check out the manual. One of the things that's really exciting, we just completed this past week, is a, making a print uh, copy, so taking that from a web-based format into a print copy. So those are going to be available soon on the uh, Illinois Farmers Market Association website. But I would encourage you, if you are, um, anyone can become a member, so people who just are interested in shopping at farmers markets, but as it says here, the primary audience is farm market vendors and then farm market managers and then those people that work with them. So I would encourage you to check out the Farmers Market Association. Another organization, this is a national organization called the Farmers Market Coalition and the, the URL is here. And one of the things that this organization does is it strengthen farmers markets for the benefits of farmers, consumers, and communities. So the Illinois Farmers Market Association is a member of the Farmers Market Coalition, and then individuals can also become a member. Coming up uh, in March, on March 21st in Chicago, and on March 25th in Springfield, the Farmers Market Association is holding uh, statewide meetings, so at those two locations. And we're really fortunate to have Dar Wolnick, who will be coming to be a presenter at both of those workshops. She works with the Farmers Market Coalition and has many years of experience working with uh, farmers markets. But I would suggest, too, if you have any questions about the uh, Farmers Market Coalition has webinars that are recorded on there, all kinds of really great resources. So for both people who vend at the farmers market and then for farm market managers, it's a great resource. Small Farm Central, I don't know if anyone on the webinar today is familiar with this organization. I'm currently taking their web marketing for farmers market sales course. It's a free six week course, it's really great. Um, it's a brief, it takes a couple hours, but it's, it's full of great information. It's a professional and website design service for fo those people who are doing direct marketing to farmers. And then they have this really fun thing where um, it's free. You can sign up for this Farm Marketing Minute where they send this weekly uh, brief email to you about um, issues that are of interest to people that are at farmers markets. And then I spent some time um, looking at some resources that I thought might be of interest to people. Uh, the first is Market Farming Success, the Business of Growing and Selling Local Food. 
it's a really good resource. The SARE publication is Free Marketing Strategies for Farmers and Ranchers. The New Farmers Market for Farm, Fresh Ideas for produ Producers, Managers, and Communities, Sell What You Sow, and then the sell, Selling Farm Products at Farmers Market. This is from the University of Kentucky, and this is also a free document. These other books, Sell What You Sow, and the New Farmers Market, and Marketing Farming Success are books that you would, would need to purchase. These other two, Marketing Strategies and Selling Farm Products, are both free uh, PDFs. So at this time, I think if there's any questions. But I would just encourage people, um, just be a more critical ob observer. And then if you're a farmer that's vending at the farmer's market, and as I said, a lot of this stuff many of you have probably already thought of or obviously are, are already doing, but just maybe try something new and to see if, if you have any opportunities, you know, for in, increasing your sales by, you know, maybe tweaking something. But I would say that over half of the vendors at, at the market I went to, um, it just seemed that they put the produce just laying all over the table. And so I don't know if that made people disinclined to buy it, but it just certainly um, wasn't very inviting. So um, that's just something that I, I would say as a vendor or as a, a cons consumer, I, you know, I, I, I could tell the difference of stands where it seemed that people you know, gave it some attention to how the display looked. Um, Teacup Farm is asking, can I go a bit over that? So here we can see um, that's <laughs> sort of like the kid toy version. But um, so maybe you can sh ask, you know, like, do you have any specific question about the dimensionality of like what the thinking is behind doing that, then you could type that in there and we could answer that. So really it's just, it's it, it's asking you to think about, so if somebody walks up there and like that picture of those apples where you saw you know, some were on flat plates, some were, they were in different sizes of containers, tall, you know, so it had this look to it. And I think it just, obviously you have a smaller space, so you have let's say a six foot table or eight foot table or whatever, if you provide your vegetables at different heights and, and depths, you're going to be able to get more produce on that table, right, than you would if you would just lay those things out on a table. So as it says here in the last bullet, it allows you to, um, I don't know, I think it just showcases the products better. At least for my aesthetic, I, I like it when farmers have that at, at their booth. So I guess it's all a personal preference of, you know, how people like that. Um, Oh, entry back of the booth, height, just display or customer access. It's mostly from a customer access thing, at least what I'm talking about today. And then we talked about like in terms of people's reach and how they can do it. And then so if you're at a farmer's market where you're just one table and you're standing behind it, it's a different thing than if you have this, let's say, U-shaped thing with several tables where people are able to come in and walk through the display. But even in those, you're, because you want to maximize space, this dimensionality or having, you know, some more height than like crates piled on top of one another or something like that, obviously it would allow you to have more produce in that, in that space. Um, and Bob asked this question about samples. So Bob, is it about the whole thing with the legislation that farmers are going to be able to have this statewide sampling component? Just samples question mark, so I wasn't sure. Maybe, Deborah, you can explain what the uh, rules and regulations are now and then what uh, ISA and others are, are pushing towards for, for more uh, more complete rules. Okay. So currently, and this is my understanding, and if anyone's on the call from uh, a public health department, when you want to provide samples or people who have personal experience could chime in, you, you have to go through wherever the county you are, and then there's provisions for you to, to get um, uh, certificate or paperwork that would allow you to provide samples and you have to have the appropriate wash station and things like that, right, to be able to do that. Well, looking at University of Kentucky, or Kentucky and other states, they developed provisions where people could go through training, which would include all of the things that you needed to do, well, primary, obviously primarily for food safety. So you would go to that. You, a several hour class and then when you're done with the class you would get a certificate but what's interesting about what Illinois did in the legislation is, is that 
the Illinois Department of Public Health agreed to have reciprocity so that a farmer, because many of you vend at many counties and many markets, right, it could get really cost prohibitive if you had to keep buying that for every market that you went to on a weekly basis or whatever, right? It, it, you wouldn't want to do that. So you would pay this one fee. I think it's going to be up to three years, and I might be misspeaking, but I thought it was like $50. And then it would allow you then to do sampling at any market in the state, and you would obviously have to show that certificate to the public health official that was there. And then you would have to be in compliance with the regulations for the sampling protocol, like what you needed to do in terms of depending on what you're sampling. But the goal of it is to provide uh, from you as the farmer, you want to give samples. As I said, studies have shown it's almost 85 to 90 percent increase in people's sales if they can taste something, right? But you have to make sure that you are protecting food safety. So you can't have something where people are reaching in and touching other things like that. So um, there's all the details are going to be forthcoming, um, and they're through the Farmers Market Association, and, and as Mike mentioned, the Illinois Stewardship Alliance worked um, to, you know, have that legislation passed. So I think that's going to be a good thing for vending at farmers markets. So any other um, questions? Oh, it says in Champaign, uh, one of the members has not has not had success with the use. Of, so can you maybe type in why? Oh. That's interesting. So if people can see that, they say people seem to appear intimidated by it and don't like to enter the area. That's interesting. Deborah, would you like us to give them access to be uh, uh, to hear their audio, to talk rather than type? Oh, sure. Yeah, that would be good. Thanks, Mike. Yeah, they say in their note they tend to walk by and not see what's towards the back. Hmm. Champagne, you're unmuted if you'd want to talk. Thanks. So I've got Ed Rolf here. He's done um, some farmer market experience in the past. I mean, I'm sorry, Ed Harper. <laughs> uh, my experience where I was at is, as, as Ava typed in there, that they tend to just walk by. They don't really see what you have. They don't really like to enter underneath a tent. Um, now, I, that was with one space. Mm -hmm. With two spaces now, I could give it a try and see if it would help it a little wider. But the other problem I had with just one space is as customers were coming to the back to pay, uh, it prevented other customers from being able to get up to the produce that they wanted to see and or touch by, you know, what have you. Yeah, when I was thinking of a U-shaped thing, and your name's Ed? Yes. Yeah. Um, thanks for your comment. I really appreciate that. Is that you think about, um, you know, a table to your left, a table to your right, and let's say like three tables to the back. And so when so when people come in, and then what's in the middle would be um, a table where you would then have your cash register and, and bagging and things like that. But um, yeah, I agree. I, I mean, that's something that's interesting if that had been your experience where people were disinclined to do that. So you mm -hmm. said you only had one table in, in inside the tent like that, or how many tables did you have in your area? No, I, I had three. Three. Okay. I one on each side and one on the back. It it's only a, it's a it's supposed to be a twenty foot space, but it's actually more like eighteen. Okay. Uh, something and so like I say with I'm now renting two spaces and having the all three tables out to the front and seem to improve things, mm -hmm. but I have not attempted with the double spacing the U shape again where it would be more room. But that is the way I had it set up. I had the produce on the side tables, and then the bagging and the scale and red, you know, in the middle. cash box on the back, smaller table. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it, it just seemed a little too jammed. And uh, again, uh, this summer I may, I might try that, you know, just a time or two with a larger, wider area with two spaces, mm -hmm. so there's more room for customers to actually get in there and see. Um, but with just one space, it is really seemed to be a problem. People really seem reluctant to want to walk underneath the the pop up tent. I don't know why, but mm -hmm. no, thank you. That's for sharing. Has anyone else had that a similar experience to Ed? That you know they tried that and they just didn't think it worked with customers. Because I think that's the thing about this when you you know talk about these um, the, the wide range of things to think about. Um, you know, for me, I guess I'd ask the question to any, you know, Ed or anyone else that's willing to share is that do you, in terms of uh, 
presenting your product, you do this dimensional thing where you have different, you know, things stacked on each other or sizes, or are you just laying everything flat on the table? There we go. My experience is I, I use, uh, my wife used to own a bakery, and she has some bakery trays, mm -hmm. some singles and doubles, which uh, singles are, I don't know, approximately a foot wide and almost uh, probably two feet long. And then the doubles, of course, is twice the width. Uh, and then I use a board in the back to prop that up. So it is not as three-dimensional as some of the things you're showing, but, mm -hmm. but it is angled toward the customer, mm -hmm. angled upward. And so it's, it's I guess, kind of in between. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. not actually flat on the table. They are in the trays. And the trays, you know, cover the table mm -hmm. with a, a bit of a raise, about three inches raise in the back. Mm -hmm. So I guess that's the thing just to, you know, consider where, um, you know, when you, you're vending and you, know, you, have, you don't have much chance to leave where, you're, where you are, but, um, you know, to just walk around and look and see how um, other people do it. And then I guess you could even, you know, if you have friends or family that are willing to comment on, you know, their shopping experience there too, right? So like what you said, Ed, if it became a thing where people were intimidated to go in, the flow wasn't right, you know, all of that, then um, that didn't, wasn't going to work for you, right? So I didn't, you know, I'm, I'm not sure if, you know, and as I was reading and farmers I talked to, the main farmer I buy from at the farmer's market in Springfield, he's in a U. And um, I, I like that to go in there because I, I feel like I'm in a little store. Isn't that weird? So cycle, you know. So I guess it just depends on different people. Where I, I like, because I can go to all the vendors that are out there, but when I go by him, I feel like I'm going into this special place. So you know, I guess everybody has their different idea of how that works. So what works for me as a customer, someone else might think that's not what they like. So. Well, any other comments that um, you know people have? But I would encourage you to. Um, if you are a farmer's market, farmer market manager or a vendor, to uh, check out the Farmers Market Association because you know we have these workshops, our conferences coming up, and workshops, and then also with extension, there'll be opportunities for for different programming that would be of interest. Um, and then there's other, you know, our nonprofit organizations across the state often do you know training that would be interested. So just you know, um, check out those things this summer and. Uh, you know, next season, our winter season. So anything else, Mike or Bronwyn, do you want to share anything um, from our the farmer's market study or anything uh, that we're doing? You can talk. Can, can Bronwyn talk, Mike? <laughs> About our farmer's market pricing project. Um, I guess I would have a question. Is anybody on the call? Um, did anybody participate in that project last year? But the Urbana market was one. When I see the comments from Champaign. Uh, what, what the goal of that project was is um, we did 11 markets across the state. So they were urban, rural, north, south, east, and west. And our goal was to uh, obviously find out the prices of the markets every week. And so working with the University of Kentucky and the University of Tennessee, there, there was a UK had developed this whole uh, a program for how you would collect that data, and so every week, each of the people that were collecting from the 11 markets that would be sent in. We had a graduate student that worked with us, and those were that information was put together in one sheet, so that you, as a market manager or as a farmer who was vending, could go to that website and look and see, you know, the range of pro, uh, prices for uh, produce being sold at farmer's market that week. And so uh, it was an interesting thing. Bronwyn and I are working on um, a report yet next year about um, more efficiencies in the data that, and it's how it's presented so it would be more useful to you as a farmer on the pricing side of things. And I just copied and pasted the link um, into the chat box if anybody wants to go and, and check out what some of the pricing reports from last year looked like. I can see where if you are looking at that link, going to the different to the link to look at different sites throughout the state, um, or compared to I think Kentucky and Tennessee sites also can be 
um, viewed from this link, um, get an idea of the size of your market and how how your prices on different different things are comparing um, as the season progresses, uh, compared against different locations in the state. Um, and it just gives you a, a, an idea of where you stand price range wise on some of the different products that are that are marketed so just a, just kind of an overall view of the different products sold throughout the state and in neighboring states yes yeah, so check if you get a chance um, to check it out because that you know pricing is uh, a whole a whole nother webinar that we could talk about um, you know pricing at farmers markets again you um, my emails up there so if I said something that you were like whoa I that, that hasn't been my experience or whatever you know please feel free to email me because um, you know I, I we're all learning together from each other and um, if I can provide you with any other information that you might be interested in um, you know please let me know so Mike that that's all I have if I think we can adjourn well thanks everyone for participating this afternoon and thanks Deborah for the presentation uh, as, as always, is an excellent presentation, very thorough. I think we, we all gained a, a quite a deal out of effect, how to effectively display for the farmer's market. And as other ones mentioned, uh, not only for the farmer's market, but maybe for, for farm stands as well. So thanks again, Deborah. Y'all have a good day.